Here we're gonna look at a problem that was inspired by a question from a 2017 math contest that was held by Carnegie Mellon University. So I'll let you guys find that if you want to. But here's the setup. So for x, y positive real numbers, we define the following operation. So we'll call it circle, and we have x circle y equals x times y over x plus y. And I want to point something out. This operation is most definitely commutative because notice x times y is y times x, and also x plus y is y plus x. But a priori, we do not know if it is associative or not, so we can't assume that. And our goal is to evaluate this monstrosity. So notice we've associated it from the inside out, and the innermost operation will be 2 to the 2019, circle 2 to the 2020. And then to that, we do the operation with 2 to the 2018 all the way down until we get 2 to the first power. So I haven't written any hints down, but I will tell you a hint, and I'll actually give you two solutions for this. So I'd say the hint that jumps out to me uh, immediately is to use induction. And you might say, well, why is that? Well, anytime you've got something like this, which is dependent on an end point, like in this case, 2020, where that 2020 could be replaced with some arbitrary natural number, then you can probably prove something with induction, and this is like some special case of that. So that would be my suggestion, is to prove something by induction. There's also a way to do this without induction, by looking at what is essentially the associativity of this operation. So let's get to our first solution, and we'll use induction for the first solution. So I wanna start with, a, with some exploration to build up some sort of guess for our inductive formula. So I'm gonna first notice that two to the n is equal to two to the n. Okay, well, that kind of stands on its own. And then the next thing that I wanna do is compute two to the n minus one circle two to the n. So that would be like the innermost thing right here with n equals 2020. But again, we're gonna find a more general formula here. And so notice that this is going to be 2 to the n minus 1 times 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 1 plus 2 to the n. So the cool thing is, is we can factor out a 2 to the n minus 1 from the denominator, and that'll leave us with 2 to the n minus 1 times 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 1, and then we have 2 plus 1. So I first maybe want to notice that this is most definitely equal to three. So maybe that's like two to the first power plus one. Maybe that's a way to think about it. But it also could just as easily be two to the second power minus one. Notice that's four minus one. So at the moment, it's a bit unclear exactly which structure we have going on here. But what is clear is that we can cancel this and this, and we're left with two to the n over three. Great. And so now let's do one more um, operation on top of that. So that'll be 2 to the n minus 2, circle 2 to the n minus 1, circle 2 to the n. So from this uh, first calculation, we know what this inside parentheses is. So this is going to be 2 to the n minus 2, circle 2 to the n over 3. Now we can apply our rule right here. So we get the product in the numerator. That'll be 2 to the n minus 2 times 2 to the n all over 3. And then we have the sum in the denominator. So let's see what we get for that. <clears throat> so we're going to have 2 to the n minus 2 plus 2 to the n over 3. So let's maybe go ahead and clear the denominators in the numerator and the denominator. So we can do that by multiplying this numerator and denominator by three. So another thing that we can do is factor a two to the n minus one out of the numerator and the denominator. So doing all of that, we get two to the n minus two times two to the n in the numerator. <clears throat> then in the denominator, we're gonna have two to the n minus two times three plus two squared. So let's see, the three comes from multiplying this thing to three, so that's gonna go on to both of these. And then the two squared comes from factoring this two to the n minus two out. So notice this guy 
and this guy is gonna factor, and we're left with two to the n over, so that's gonna be equal to seven. So notice it looks like this guess was right, that's in yellow, this one less than a power of two, because notice we've got seven, which is one less than a power of two. So notice we have, this is two to the n over two cubed minus one. <clears throat> Just like this one up here is two to the n over two squared minus one. So let's see if we can see some structure here. So notice if we have just a single term here, well then this actually fits this uh, formula as well. This is two to the n over two to the one minus one. Okay, so if we've done only, uh, if we only have one term there, but now we've got two terms here and we've got two to the n over two squared minus one. So let's go ahead and point this out. This is two terms. And that seems to correspond with this two right here. And then next, notice here we have three terms. And that seems to correspond with this three right here. So I'll let you guys think about what the general formula for this should be, but I'll clean up the board and we'll start with that claim and then prove it. So we just got done doing some case-by-case -case analysis to come up with the following claim. And that is for all m and n, which are natural numbers, we have two to the n minus m, circle two to the n minus m plus one, circle all the way up to two to the n minus one, circle two to the n, is equal to two to the n divided by two to the m plus one minus one. So two things I wanna notice here. This two to the n thing, which is like the innermost object, that's what ends up in the numerator of maybe like our final guess. And then what ends up in the denominator is two to the power of how many total terms we have here minus one. So notice we've got m plus one terms here. This is like the zeroth term, the first term, all the way up to the mth term. So that's m plus one total terms. Okay, so now let's go ahead and prove this claim. Notice if we prove this claim, then our you know, problem is actually just a special case of this claim. Okay, so the proof, well, we're gonna use induction like I hinted at earlier. And for induction, you always need a base case. But notice on the previous board, we already proved the m equals zero, m equals one, and m equals two cases as we were trying to guess a closed form for this kind of object. So we've done the base case already. So now let's go ahead and make an induction hypothesis. So in other words, we want to suppose for some k, we know that this statement is true where we've replaced m with k. So I guess I should say we're inducting on the index m here. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So we've got two to the n minus k, circle, two to the n minus k plus one, circle all the way up to two to the n minus one, circle two to the n is equal to two to the n over two to the k plus one minus one. So that's our induction hypothesis. So again, what we did, we assumed that the kth case was true. And then we're gonna use this assumption along with the definition of our operation to prove that the k plus first case is also true. So let's go ahead and write down the k plus first case. So that's gonna be two to the n minus k plus one. So notice the k plus first case is gonna be that, and then we'll have circle two to the n minus k, circle two to the n minus k plus one, circle all the way down to two to the n minus one, circle two to the n, and then all the way up. Great. But now the super important thing to notice here is all of this stuff that I'm boxing in blue is the subject of the induction hypothesis. Notice it's the left-hand side of the induction hypothesis, which means we know that it's equal to the right-hand side of the induction hypothesis. So we can just slap that into this uh, equation and then we've got something that we can deal with. So this is gonna be two to the n minus k minus one. I'll distribute that minus one. And then we're gonna have circle, two to the n over two to the k plus one minus one. 
And now we need to evaluate that using the definition of our circle operation. Okay, so let's get to it. So it's gonna be the product of these two numbers divided by the sum of these two numbers. So let's notice that the product is two to the n minus k minus one times two to the n over two to the k plus one minus one. So that's the product of those two numbers. Good. And then the sum of those two numbers is gonna be uh, two to the n minus k minus one um, plus two to the n over two to the k plus one minus one. So we've got the product of those numbers divided by the sum of those two numbers. Now we're gonna play around with this the same way we did our base cases. So let's go ahead and clear the denominators. So we can do that by multiplying by two to the k plus one minus one, two to the k plus one minus one. And now let's see what that gives us. So in the numerator, we'll have two to the n minus k minus one times two to the n. So that's what we've got upstairs. And now let's see what we've got downstairs. So we're gonna take this guy right here and distribute it onto these two terms. So that's gonna give us two to the, notice we have n minus k minus one times two to the k plus one. So that's gonna be two to the n Good. And then we're going to have minus 2 to the n minus k minus 1. That's from distributing this onto the 1. And then we're going to have plus 2 to the n as well. And that is from taking this red and clearing that denominator. So we'll have plus 2 to the n. So now I've about run out of room. I'm going to go ahead and bring that step up to here and we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we did some arithmetic and we arrived at this version for the K plus first case. So all of these compositions of this operation ended up being this object. So we've got two to the N minus K minus one times two to the N over two to the N minus two to the N minus K minus one plus two to the N. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is use the fact that if I add a power of two to itself, I get the next power of two. And we can see that because this is gonna be equal to two times two to the n, which is two to the n plus one. So now let's go ahead and write that down. So notice what are we gonna have? We're gonna have two to the n minus k minus one times two to the n all over two to the n plus one minus two to the n minus k minus one. Okay, solid. And so next, I'm going to factor this thing that I've underlined in pink out of the denominator. So let's see what that gives us. My numerator is unchanged. I've got 2 to the n minus k minus 1 times 2 to the n over. So let's see. I'm going to have something minus 1. And then all of this times 2 to the n minus k minus 1. So that's going to be a power of 2. The question is, what power of 2 will it be? Well, we can easily calculate that by taking the difference n plus one minus n minus k minus one. So that's what we get if we divide this term by this term, which is exactly what we wanna do if we factor it out. But notice those n's will cancel, this minus sign will turn that k positive, and then we'll have one minus negative one is two, so we get two to the k plus two. But next we can see that this term and this term cancel, leaving us with two to the n over two to the k plus two minus one, which is exactly what we needed to show to finish this induction hypothesis. So in other words, this claim is true. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and get rid of this and we'll use this claim to evaluate this object. Okay, so we just proved that this claim is true, and now we're ready to apply this claim to evaluate our goal object over here. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So we've got two to the one, circle two to the two, circle two to the three, all the way up to two to the 2019, circle two to the 2020. Great. So it's pretty easy to see that this object is equal to this object where n is equal to 2020. And now we have to figure out what m is. So I think, what if we write one as 
2020 minus 2019. So that tells us that M is equal to 2019. But really in our formula up there, we've got M plus one. So really we want M plus one, which is again, 2020. So that allows us to write down a nice closed form of this of two to the 2020 over two to the 2020 minus one. And so that is the value of this object. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lay up the board and give you guys a second solution. Okay, so for our second non, okay, so for our second solution, I'll just kind of sketch out the solution. I'm not going to go into all of the details. So maybe what I wanna do is find a different form for this operation. So let's take x circle y. Notice that's, that's x, y over x plus y. Well, we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by one over x, y. So here we're doing one over x, y, one over x, y, and that's gonna give us one over one over x plus one over y. So that's actually a nice looking formula. So now let's see what we get for three of these things. So y circle z, and then x circle that. So that's gonna be x circle, um, yz over y plus z. Okay, and then we're gonna have the product of these, so that's gonna be xyz over y plus z divided by the sum of these, so that's x um, plus yz over y plus z. Okay, so we've got something like that. Now maybe we'll clear the denominator in the numerator and the denominator. So we can do that by multiplying by y plus z upstairs and downstairs. That's gonna give us x, y, z over x, y plus x, z plus y, z. Okay. But now the what thing I wanna notice from here is I can do something very similar to this step. Multiply by one over x, y, z to the numerator and the denominator. And that'll give me a new formula for this composition of this operation three times. And that is one over one over x plus one over y plus one over z. Great, so look, we've got that and we have this. And so that pretty naturally brings us to a claim about the infold composition of this operation. And maybe that claim could go like this. So our claim would be that x1 circle, x2 circle, x3 circle, all the way up to xn minus one circle xn is one over one over x1 plus all the way up to one over xn. Good. So I'm not gonna prove this claim. You can prove this claim pretty easily with induction. Um, since we did that full solution before, I'm not gonna worry about it. But what I will do is apply this claim to our goal to see what we get. So let's maybe write this is equal to G for goal. And notice here we have G using this claim is going to be one over two to the minus one plus two to the minus two all the way up to two to the minus 2020. Good. Again, that's because I've got like one over two, one over two squared and so on and so forth. Okay, so next what I wanna do is make this denominator a little bit more friendly. So I'm gonna multiply this whole denominator by two to the 2020. So that's gonna leave us with two to the 2020 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, well, that's gonna go down to one and then we'll have a two to the one by multiplying the term right before it, a two squared by multiplying the term right before that, and let's see where we end. So we're gonna end at two to the 2019, because it's gonna be 2020 minus one. And now we're gonna use the standard formula for the sum of a finite geometric series. So let's recall that one plus u plus all the way up to u to the n is equal to u to the n plus one minus one over u minus one. Okay, now what we can do is use this where n is equal to 2019 and u is equal to two. And that's exactly what's happening in that denominator there. So that means we have two to the 2020 in the numerator and the denominator adds up to 
two to the 2019 plus one. So that's gonna be two to the 2020. And then we have minus one. And then that whole denominator is divided by two minus one, but that's just one. So we get the same value, um, which we should because I mean, there's only one correct value for this. Um, and that's a good place to stop.